pedorro puede frenar una marea de gente que con las madres, las abuelas, se movilizan los sindicatos, se movilizan las asambleas, se movilizan los jubilados, las organizaciones sociales y los partidos de izquierda. This is Steve Zeltzer with Workweek, and we have been covering the rise of Malay, the president of Argentina, and his role in attacking the working class and his role internationally. And joining us is Ricardo Ortiz, who's a labor researcher and has been closely following the developments in Argentina with uh, the Malay presidency and what it means for the working class and the relationship now of the United States to Malay. So welcome to our show, Ricardo. Thank you, Steve. Good evening. So the M Malay came to office and with an agenda to privatize the entire economy, to attack the unions, to bring in the IMF and, and take directions from the IMF to make it a colony of the United States. That's what he would like to do, dollarize the economy. And uh, there have been some splits in the capitalist class in relationship to Malay in Argentina. What has been the opposition to Malay and also the most recent development in which a demonstration of government workers and picateros was attacked today in uh, Buenos Aires? Yeah, definitely. You are absolutely uh, correct when you say that he uh, was selected to the presidency with a neoliberal and a completely aggressive program against the working class. And, you know, he has uh, attempted to have the legislature to pass this uh, emergency decrease and uh, uh, also an omnibus bill that will, you know, uh, criminalize uh, protests in Argentina that uh, will give uh, Millet uh, practically absolute powers to uh, govern And uh, certainly that has uh, made uh, the workers' uh, organizations and uh, the working class in general to oppose it. And, uh, he, you know, his uh, program has been so aggressive that, uh, you know, even uh, politicians from the capitalist parties and uh, the, one of the latest incidents that took place uh, a couple of weeks ago was that uh, uh, he attempted to eliminate some subsidies uh, that were, you know, uh, directed uh, traditionally toward uh, state, uh, provincial governments. So there was a coalition of uh, five Patagonic, you know, from the Patagonia region, uh, five uh, governors that uh, organized themselves uh, in this uh, coalition and uh, did oppose uh, Millet, uh, and were demanding that the you know federal government would send them uh, those uh, money for all these subsidies in their provinces. And uh, uh, they uh, even said that uh, if Millet wouldn't you know uh, make a pact with them, particularly in the in the province of uh, Neken which uh, produces oil, it's a very rich oil producing uh, province, they would stop production. So uh, uh, that created a whole debate in the country and uh, the local uh, uh, trade union organizations in that province uh, supported you know, uh, the governor's uh, claim. And this is a governor that supported Millet's candidacy, you know, uh, and... Uh, Uh, the, you know, these uh, other governors are not uh, leftist governors uh, no, of, you know, of any kind. Uh, these are capitalist uh, neoliberal politicians. And uh, Millet responded uh, very aggressively, uh, called, uh, called, you know, called them names. And uh, he got so irrationally angry that uh, he uh, uh, withdrew the project that, uh, you know, the, the, the so-called National Emergency Decree and the Omnibus Bill, uh, but now he's submitting that again. So to the other part of your question, uh, you know, in, the, in, in, in this uh, uh, last two weeks, starting from the 24th of uh, April, uh, of uh, May, uh, March, I'm sorry, uh, that day is the commemoration Uh, of the uh, and the protest against uh, the dictatorship that uh, took place from seven, 1976 till 1983. Uh, every every year, you know, the social organizations come out and pro and make a protest against it. 
Uh, and uh, in this case, you know, uh, the, uh, ma it was a massive uh, uh, series of uh, demonstrations throughout the Argentinian uh, country uh, in every capital city. So there were, you know, uh, hundreds of thousands, probably millions uh, protesting throughout the country. And Millet, you know, uh, attempted to stop people from doing that, but they, they were, you know, the social organizations, the workers, the leftist parties were successful. Uh, no, not very long after that, uh, the, uh, the head of the American CIA uh, visited Argentina. I mean, uh, as recent as uh, last week. And uh, he met with Millet and he met with the head of the Argentinian uh, uh, Federal Intelligence Agency. And uh, a few days uh, after, uh, talking about this week, the head of the United States Southern Command, uh, General uh, Laura Richardson, uh, went uh, to uh, for a visit to Argentina. And, uh, you know, Millet uh, was celebrating that, uh, you know, uh, he's uh, making uh, the alliance with the United States uh, closer. The United States uh, donated a C-130 plane right there during her visit uh, in a provocative, in a provocation uh, by uh, this imperialist representative. Uh, they uh, make a speech close to a Chinese a scientific uh, aerospace uh, base, but this space is not for military uh, purposes. So, you know, it's a scientific base, you know, uh, that is located there. So Richardson and Millet, you know, they came close to that base and delivered speeches over there in a very provocative uh, attitude. And uh, the workers from, uh, you know, that, uh, from the province of, uh, you know, uh, that, they are that very southernmost uh, province, they did uh, demonstrations against uh, uh, General uh, Richardson. Uh, Millet, while he's uh, attacking the, the working class, and I will go into uh, some of the specifics of your question uh, in, a, in a few seconds, but it's worth to mention that while he's uh, delivering all these uh, austerity measures and attacking the working class, uh, he, uh, his government bought 20 uh, F-16s at a value of uh, a half a billion uh, American dollars. So uh, uh, the Danish government is going to supply to supply these uh, uh, planes. Uh, and Millet actually will be flying to Denmark tomorrow to um, make a, you know con uh, make a, a effect uh, official the, the the sale of these planes to Argentina. Uh, the U.S. Uh, while you know uh, General Richardson was there, built uh, is planning to uh, build a, more or less like a terminal that uh, will make a, a equivalency equivalency to a uh, to a base in Argentina. And you know, adding to that, let's go to uh, the most recent uh, sensational events, uh, starting by. Uh, uh, yesterday, uh, yesterday uh, there was a massive protest of uh, unemployed workers that numbered thousands right in uh, Argentina. They were, you know, claiming uh, uh, social assistance, uh, food, employment, and they went to the minister ministry of uh, so-called social capital. And uh, while they were standing, you know. Uh, uh, in front of that uh, building, uh, there are a series of uh, police forces, uh, starting by uh, the city police, the uh, federal police, and a police that uh, is like a military police called the Gardemeria, which is the equivalent of the uh, Italian Carabinieri. 
So all these forces uh, went ahead and started beating on workers and uh, arrested workers. And uh, some workers had to be taken to the hospital. Uh, Millet today, uh, he first landed in Miami and then uh, he, he went to uh, Texas to meet with Elon Musk because he wants Elon Musk to uh, take uh, over some uh, lithium faci- uh, refining uh, facilities in, in Argentina. He put in his uh, tweet uh, account, uh, congratulating the police, uh, saying that uh, that was good, that, that people deserve that, uh, that uh, that is what is going to happen to people that dare to be breaking the laws, that the party is over. I mean, a complete uh, provocation. Uh, today, uh, there was a, a, a general strike of one day uh, called by the uh, the UTA, Union de Transvieros Automotores, uh, which is uh, the union that uh, organizes uh, uh, city bus drivers, you know. Uh, so uh, they, you know, uh, they have a conflict because uh, they, uh, these companies owe them, you know, uh, salaries uh, earned, you know, uh, before. And uh, they are trying to bargain with the, these companies and uh, at the same time, they're asking the government to uh, help with subsidies to uh, the regular population. And this is a demand that the workers have been uh, calling for, you know. So uh, they shot around 400 uh, uh, lines in the city of Buenos Aires. And according to press releases, it did affect uh, a whole range of uh, 9 million people in the greater Argentinian, I mean, uh, greater Buenos Aires uh, metropolitan area. So uh, that's, uh, you know, two of the most recent uh, uh, events. Well, what was the role of the United States in the Argentinian military dictatorship? In the, in the, the role that the United States uh, played uh, during the Argentinian uh, uh, dictatorship was a very uh, intense and uh, a complex. Uh, the Argent, you know, the United States uh, armed and equipped and trained, you know, the Argentinian forces along, you know, uh, France and uh, other, you know, imperialist powers. The Argentinian uh, armed forces uh, helped to train the Nicaraguan Contras that uh, were opposing, you know, the uh, at that time, the populist leftist regime in Nicaragua. Uh, so uh, they did favors for each other. And also, you know, the United States uh, uh, helped uh, the spying uh, security forces of uh, the Argentina, you know, of Argentina and uh, uh, target activists and uh, uh, collaborated uh, closely with uh, the Argentinian intelligence services. And in the auto plants, Ford plant, uh, other uh, auto plants of foreign companies, uh, workers were uh, kidnapped and killed. Uh, The United States was involved in that, the CIA in supporting that military coup. Yes, uh, actually uh, it is, evidence that are now the United States uh, have declassified through the National Security Archives, which this, a lot of these documents are, you know, public right now, and they are in the internet. You can even look at them. Uh, in, like you said, in Ford uh, Motor Plants, uh, people were uh, tortured and killed. And not only that, in the Mercedes-Benz uh, plants, in, in Argentina, uh, it happened the same thing. Actually, uh, some of the people that were, some of the relatives of victims of uh, uh, the people that uh, were tortured at Mercedes, they filed uh, a, a, a lawsuits internationally uh, against Mercedes-Benz. Uh, one of them actually was attempted to be seen right here in the Bay Area. 
Uh, I, I recently found out about it. And the United States government uh, sided, you know, uh, with a uh, Mercedes, uh, help Mercedes not to be indicted uh, in a civil suit in, in, in federal court in the U.S. Uh, so, you know, German imperialism and American imperialism collaborating in uh, crimes. And this uh, expansion of U.S. Uh, imperialism, military bases, uh, uh, southern part of Argentina, uh, the overthrow of a Bolivia, the overthrow of Peru by the U.S. government. It seems that the United States is moving towards supporting potentially a military dictatorship in, in Argentina. You think that that should be of concern for both Argentine working class and American workers? It should be a concern. When you got a, an American general visiting a country three times in a year, and uh, uh, I want to make clear to uh, people that are watching this uh, that, uh, you know, uh, the head of the Southern Command is what is called, you know, in the laws of the United States, uh, the, the Goldwater Nichols Act, that uh, is the law that uh, organizes the armed forces of, of the United States. Uh, the Southern Command is what is called a combatant command. Okay, so this general is uh, the chief of a combatant command. What does that mean? A combatant commander leads all the troops and in a case of war will assume command. Uh, it would be a, a war commander. So that, you know, it's not merely somebody that leads an organization. It's actually a military leader that in the case of war in, in the region assigned in this combatant command will run a war. So, uh, you know, people should be alert and uh, should be very concerned that uh, a, such a mili high military official is visiting a country three times in a year. And also, uh, adding to that, that the chief of the CIA, I mean, uh, visiting a country, that I should raise eyebrows. And of course, in the Bolivian coup, Elon Musk said that he supported that coup and he wanted the lithium in Bolivia. He did. He did. And, uh, you know, uh, many years ago, as uh, we should remember, the United States was involved attempting to uh, outcast uh, Hugo Chavez who had been at that time democratically elected. I mean, even the, uh, car, the Carter Center in Atlanta recognized that Chavez uh, was uh, fair and squarely uh, elected. And still the United States and some European uh, Union countries like Spain recognized the coup and they were actively supporting, you know, uh, the coup leaders. Uh, not to, you know, a few years ago during the Obama administration, uh, they uh, overthrew the president of uh, uh, Honduras, Manuel Zelaya. I mean, uh, Manuel Zelaya was a, a simple liberal. I mean, nothing radical. He just uh, wanna do business uh, more closely with uh, Venezuela, Cuba, etc. And that was not enough for the U.S. They uh, overthrew him, and uh, openly, they, uh, you know, uh, supported the coup uh, organizers and prevented Celaya to return to power. I mean, uh, we should remember the words of uh, uh, one of the heroes of uh, the Democratic Party for some people, Hillary Clinton. He, uh, she uh, openly, uh, you know, was posting about the American involvement in that uh, coup. So, you know, and, and, you know, we can go on uh, all night uh, talking about, the, you know, the series of coups that have happened in Latin America, uh, the overthrow of Pedro Castillo in Peru, uh, you know, uh, not too long ago, that was also supported, encouraged by uh, the United States. Fujimori in Peru that uh, did what it was called an auto coup. You know, uh, <laughs> that he eliminated parliament to, uh, you know, run the country uh, with the armed forces and himself. 
the U.S. supported uh, Fujimori at that time. It's a long list. And uh, Malay has said that uh, he lo looks to uh, the United States to uh, carry out a lot of what he wants. I mean, the IMF is supporting him. And also, uh, there is a question of, of the rise of fascism internationally. Uh, he has traveled around the world, visited other right-wing dictatorships. Is there a danger of fascism in Argentina? Well, I think we're living in a world that uh, the danger of fascism is uh, present. I, I wouldn't say only in Argentina, even right here in the United States where we are. I mean, uh, we got to look at the recent Arizona Supreme Court on abortion that uh, they said they valid the law of 1864 that was amended in 1901. I mean, what the hell is that? And uh, we got a, you know, a, a person like Trump that he has uh, a vow that he's going to fight the labor movement that he's going to, uh, you know, deport millions of people. Uh, yes. And uh, Millet is uh, close friends with, uh, uh, you know, extreme right wing uh, uh, governments. I mean, uh, uh, governments and personal and, and heads of states and uh, uh, parties, as for example, he admires and profess, you know, admir admiration for, you know, uh, Meloni which is, uh, you know, a, a right-wing populist uh, extremist in Italy, he, he is going to travel very soon to Spain to meet uh, with uh, to the Congress of Vox, which uh, Vox is, an organ organ is a political party in Spain that is anti-immigrant, that, uh, you know, uh, defends uh, the monarchy, uh, wants to eliminate uh, regional uh, governments, uh, <laughs> praises Franco, you know, wants to go back to the old glory days of uh, the, the General Franco. I mean, Millet uh, has many times met with uh, uh, Santiago Abascal, the president of uh, Vox. And, uh, you know, he's going to the Vox convention, which will take place, I think, next month or, you know, something like that. Uh, it is a fact of life. I mean, some people claim that, uh, oh, Millet's uh, plans have uh, failed. Well, you know, they, they have failed because uh, he has faced uh, workers' opposition and even opposition from uh, sectors of the bourgeoisie, of the ruling class. Not because uh, all of a sudden he has uh, softened his policies. He is still wants to have uh, these exceptional laws to be approved. He resubmitted, like I said before, uh, to Congress, uh, a new emergency decree and a new omnibus bill that will limit, you know, the right to protest, uh, will limit, uh, even in the trade unions, uh, will one of the provisions that the omnibus bill uh, contemplates is uh, limiting the terms of uh, uh, people in office in labor organizations. So this man is a bendy, very dangerous man. And the organization against uh, Malay, uh, Javier Malay, how is that formed and is it growing? There is a United Left Front uh, that have organized, they organized the first protest, but what is going on with the rest of the working class? The uh, movement in the unions, is it growing to organize in the working class? The Peronist, the Peronist unions uh, and the Peronist have still a big movement in Argentina. What is their relationship to this movement against uh, against Malay? I think uh, there is uh, growing a lot of opposition within uh, yeah, the Peronist controlled trade unions. Uh, as you said, uh, you know, the largest uh, and biggest a trade union uh, in a, a confederation in Argentina is uh, the CGT, la Confederación General de Trabajadores Argentinos. Uh, it's Peronis uh, control. But uh, one, re, you know, uh, last week, uh, the state workers, the Association of State Workers, which is a trade union, they did a formidable uh, demonstrations uh, last week. 
And, uh, you know, they uh, uh, surrounded Congress and uh, had a big protest. Uh, and that, you know, uh, uh, the teachers also uh, last week uh, came out for a protest that was uh, pretty impressive. Uh, the piqueteros uh, have come out now uh, on the 23rd of uh, this month. The It's like a inter-university uh, council of organizations that they declared that that day, the 23rd, they're going to have like a general strike of, you know, one day general strike protesting the possibility of the privatization of uh, public universities in Argentina. So uh, today in a press conference, the leadership of the CGT announced that uh, uh, they are joining the students. Uh, before that, they uh, attempted to negotiate a new uh, labor reform with uh, the Malay government. They went uh, for a meeting uh, and they come, came out with empty hands. I mean, Malay wants to do his way and he you know, uh, uh, doesn't want to buy, bow, down, buy, bow down from that. Uh, it's funny because, uh, you know, Millet has been over 100 days uh, in office. The bureaucrats of the CGT have been asking Millet to meet with them, you know, uh, or somebody, his secretary of labor, anybody that would listen to them. And uh, Millet uh, had deaf ears for their uh, uh, claims. So finally, while Millet is out of the country, uh, some, you know, uh, a, a presidential uh, a representatives talk to the Peronist bureaucrats, but, you know, they wouldn't concede of nothing. The, that makes them uh, angry. And then, you know, let me, let me say this, which is important. Because of so many protests that have been taking place, these uh, leaders cannot now, uh, you know, dismiss the claims of the working class. Out of this meeting, they angry. They came and angrily said, "We're doing these two things. We're supporting the students. On May first, there will be a federal march of the working class, but it will not be only uh, protesting, you know, commemorating." Uh, you know, the 1st of May war, that happened, worldwide celebrations. We are going to have this march as a protest uh, for everything that has been happening. And also, and also they announced that uh, on May 9th, the 9th, there's going to be a 24-hour general strike. Uh, the leftist organizations have been calling and pushing for a general strike until Millet is gone and until capitalism is overthrown. Uh, with so much uh, pressure, these bureaucrats that have been attempting to uh, stop the working class at all costs, they now are considering to do something, some, you know, actions. And the issue of the United States, as we were discussing earlier, do you think that the United States wants to push Malay through to be for him to be successful? Uh, yes, and not only not only the United States, uh, you know, uh, the European Union, uh, all the imperialist capitalist powers. Uh, the United States have uh, a bigger interest because obviously uh, uh, the United States is losing ground. In Latin America, you know, with uh, China uh, coming into uh, the play, uh, Russia, uh, the European Union itself, which is a very uh, heavy investor in uh, Latin in Latin America, and some Latin American countries they are very prominent, you know. Uh, so you know, Millet ideologically he sympathizes more with the U U.S., that's his model, you know, a complete neoliberal uh, religion. Uh, he's uh, against abortion rights. So uh, definitely the United States, you know, uh, sending, you know, these intelligence officials and uh, 
military officials, they are showing that they uh, would like to increase their presence in Latin America. But I mean, but let's remember this. <laughs> the, uh, the United States will support anybody, be it Millet or whoever that will be willing to help. If tomorrow Millet dies of a heart attack or he's uh, thrown out of power, the U.S. will go to embrace or try to inf influence the next uh, president. Uh, you know, uh, that's the history of the United States. And I mean, the situation in Latin America is uh, growing extremely uh, uh, struggles in Mexico. The Uruguayans uh, uh, invaded the Mexican embassy. Uh, the Equatorians. Equ the... Equatorian, yeah. I mean, yeah. And, um, you have a, a open you know, rise of militarism and support of coups in, in Latin America. It seems like the right wing is much more organized internationally and um i mean trump and right-wing forces here bannon they're organizing all over the world in an open way uh to implement their policies it seems like the left uh it, internationally uh, is, there is no united front against fascism for example internationally i mean organizing internationally against the rise of fascism uh actually uh, uh to yesterday it was made a call by uh, uh the brazilian uh, pro so which is a uh, you know so-called leftist uh, organization for a uh, congress against uh, fascism that you know they are making a call to have it i i think uh it's next month or this uh, later this month but generally speaking as you have mentioned i agree totally i mean uh, uh you know the right wing is uh, rising in germany uh, the right wing is growing in uh, Spain. They barely, uh, uh, you know, the the, the popular front uh, government in Spain barely held it together. You know, they had to make uh, deals with some regional parties in order to uh, survive. Uh, you know, in the United States, uh, uh, you, we see uh, uh, this uh, uh, wave of uh, right wingers uh, behind Trump. Uh, we uh, see uh, uh, in Italy, you know, the right wing. Uh, and people forget one thing. I mean, uh, we are in a very acute economic crisis. And uh, history has shown us when we uh, feel uh, uh, face similar times in history, the right wing, is, is, it takes advantage of the crisis to come up with their demagoguery to uh, influence and to attack uh, the workers organizations. So, uh, uh, you know, uh, it's an opportunity for the left to uh, call for, you know, a transitional program and organize uh, ourselves uh, to defend ourselves because uh, we see the evidence. The economy is not going to get better. And, uh, you know, uh, historically, uh, uh, this phenomena that tend have the tendency to uh, repeat itself, and the uh, the the rise of uh, fascism in the United States. There are a lot of people on the left that don't think that's a danger. Um, you have MSNBC saying that uh, the rise of Hitler and when he set, did the uh, push in uh, the regional parliament, he used he attacked the legislature, he attacked the courts like. Like Trump is doing, do you see a a continuity? I know that uh, Trump's grandfather was an actual Nazi, which people forget. Mm -hmm. uh, you see a, a threat of of a and of not only of fascism but a failure of uh, the working class uh, to confront this growth of, of of fascist ideology. Well, I mean, uh, we got to remember that uh, uh, in the last uh, year that uh, Trump uh, was president. All these uh, right-wing fascists, they were parading with, openly with uh, weapons, you know, in the United States. Right here in the Bay Area, which is the most so-called liberal uh, area in the United States, you know, uh, you as a journalist, you cover when uh, all these right-wingers came to Berkeley uh, to what they claim to uh proclaimed the end of Marxism in the USA and they did attack people over there. They were 
fights and uh, confrontations for uh, four days in the Bay Area, in Berkeley. You know, the people, the so-called People's Republic of Berkeley. <laughs> and uh, uh, we, we saw, you know, the, the murdering of uh, Heather Heyer in a Charlottesville. And, uh, you know, during the assassination of uh, George Floyd uh, in the aftermath, this uh, fascist Kyle uh, Rinderhaus, he uh, openly killed a couple of people. And uh, this guy is giving uh, uh, talks throughout the country. The other day, he was chasing out of the University of Memphis, but some, you know, right wing or orga a student organization did a provocation bringing this guy to a, you know, a majority African-American student university, you know? I mean, uh, that's how it is. Uh, we had all these, uh, uh, the, you know, groups like the Proud Boys uh, coming out and, uh, you know, uh, threatening people. Uh, you know, uh, I then you know many other right wing uh, organizations were very active during the uh, Trump presidency. I I want to remember people. You know, David Dukes, David Duke that was uh, you know in a in a sewer. All of a sudden, he came out uh, and calling you know openly for people to come out and uh, praising Trump and uh, you know very happy that. Uh, you know, Trump was a, a president. So we were not living a, under a fascist dictatorship, you know, but certainly the most right-wing elements came out to attack people and to uh, try to impose their agenda. And these people, those people are not go have not gone away. They are among us, you know. Now, one of the things Malay did uh, was to fire a large number of generals in Argentina um, and in the United States recently, a number of generals who'd said that has said that if uh, Trump is is uh, reelected or if he takes power again, they're not going to be able to control things. Things are going to get out of control. Uh, this use of the military, uh, Trump tried to use the military against protesters in Washington uh, to call the military out. At that time, Milley said no. I'm not going to allow the, the military to be called out. And do you see that as a shift and a, and a strategy, really, to, to turn the military to be used against the working class, against the people? Uh, are you talking about Argentina in this question? And Argentina and the United States, the, the role oh, of the military. Yeah. I mean, uh, uh, certainly Millet wanna had a, an officer corps that would be more attuned to his views. The problem is that the vice president of Argentina, Victoria Villarreal, his father was a lieutenant colonel in the Argentinian army, which, you know, there are some accusations that he even tortured soldiers during the Malvinas War, you know. But she boasts, he was investigated, that, you know, fortunately no charges were brought against him. Anyways, he was involved in a campaign called Operativo Independencia that happened in the year, uh, I think it was two, uh, 1975, which was a, a, an offensive that the Argentinian army waved against, uh, you know, uh, leftist uh, uh, militaristic organizations and to uh, activists in general. So uh, the vice president father was uh, a field grade officer during you know this uh, operative that uh, murdered people, arrested people, tortured people that didn't even have to do anything with these organizations, and uh, her grandfather uh, was a, a rear admiral, a historian of the Argentinian Navy, so she has uh, more contacts in, in the military that uh, probably he does. And uh, they uh, had some confrontation a few uh, weeks ago because, uh, you know, uh, people, you know, there was a, an argument among Argentinian legislatures that uh, there was quorum to call the legislature back to uh, have a session. And she couldn't refuse that. 
the, you know, the, the Argentinian Senate to uh, have a session. Milley did oppose that. So uh, Milley and his uh, group start indirectly and, uh, and not so indirectly to attack her. And she responded. She went on TV and she responded, uh, defended herself. So then uh, uh, during the anniversary of the Balbinas War, Milley make uh, an approach to uh, you know the, the vice president and make peace with her publicly. He embraced her because you know uh, he knows <laughs> that uh, his vice president is very close to the armed forces. So uh, Milley, yes, he wants to have more influence among the army, but uh, you know uh, without a doubt. That uh, the Argent and he wants to use the army in civilian uh, uh, actions as not, uh, him and, and her, you know, both of them they attempted to have the army to intervene in the province of Santa Fe in the city of Rosario, which Rosario is one of the largest cities in Argentina, and uh, it has a high crime incidence uh, that uh, you know. They say that I do drug trafficking uh, 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 activity. So one of the ideas that Millet attempted was to have the army doing police work. But some retired officers uh, came out and said, the army is not for that. You know, we should, we should not be involved doing this. Uh, and obviously, they left and human rights organizations, they uh, completely uh, oppose this. So, uh, you know, uh, the, the, that initiative was not taken to the top, but certainly, I mean, those ideas are there. And without a doubt that in a case of uh, workers' uh, uh, militancy, uh, general strikes and uh, uh, opposition, you know, the army will be called to face uh, the working class. So, uh, you know, leftists have to learn how to deal with these uh, issues. Well, the demonstration that happened uh, uh, against the uh, people asking for food, picoteros and others, they were using rubber bullets. It was a very organized armed attack on uh, the workers, on, on the uh, unemployed uh, what do you think is the reaction? You're saying the reaction is going to be a call for general strike and further mobilization of the working class in Argentina? Yes, uh, definitely. Actually, uh, this Thursday after the uh, attack on the workers, later that day, uh, they did not waste time. They called pre to, for press conferences. They called for pickets, and they did deliver those. And actually, uh, uh, tomorrow... I uh, uh, forgot to say that uh, uh, there's going to be uh, a, a huge call. It's going to be a call for a demonstration of, uh, from workers that are being fired from uh, government agencies and to oppose the privatization of, of uh, you know, a lot of the state agencies. So, uh, yeah, people are uh, uh, coming out. Uh, the legislature from the workers' uh, left front, Gabriel, Gabriel Lozano, who is a, a member of the Partido Obrero, the Workers' Party, he also filed uh, charges against uh, the municipal police for you know, what they did uh, yesterday against the workers. Uh, people that have been interviewed in the streets, uh, they have man manifested, they have expressed that uh, uh, they do oppose these attacks against uh, the workers and against people in general. Okay, well, I want to thank you very much for joining us. Uh, we've been talking with Ricardo Ortiz, who's a labor researcher who's been very closely following the developments of the Malay government uh, and where it's going, and also 
the connection now between what Malay's agenda is in Argentina and the role of the United States, the military and the CIA, which have been collaborating very closely in Argentina. So thanks for joining us. Thank you, Steve. Have a good night. Thank you all the listeners that are out there.